Hi, today I kind of like to talk about the history of special education in the United States. Um, education, I don't know if you know this or not, but it's run on a state level for the most part. There is federal involvement, but majority of it is run on a state level. So as each individual state decided to create compulsory education laws, these weren't always constitutional under the U.S. Constitution. Um, laws, as you know, on a state level can't violate the United States Constitution. Um, however, in Massachusetts in 1893, in Watson versus Cambridge, they ruled that people who were weak of mind could be expelled from school. And by weak of mind, they mean what we commonly do today as disabled or exceptional, or with exceptionalities. Um, and then history remained much the same all the way up until 1969-ish. And at that time, there was a ruling in North Carolina that parents could actually have criminal charges filed against them for trying to get their children into public school or advocating for their children. And as you know, as the parent or caretaker of somebody um, who receives special education services... Parents are the biggest advocate. Caretakers are the biggest advocates. And this was super evident in um, the Association for Retarded Citizens that was created in 1950 that we will call ARC from now on. Like, now is ARC. Um, and they actually um, got their stuff after the civil rights case in Brown versus the Board of Education. Now, I'm going to give a Forrest Gun for reference here, actually two of them, because the movie made great points at the points of history for us. Do you remember when Forrest's IQ was too low for him to be allowed in public school? And then again when he was in high school and they were allowing African American students to go into the school because of Brown versus the Board of Education, which isn't fictional, that's a real one. And he picked up the book for the girl. So there's a huge tie-in into special education the way we see it today and this case, Brown versus the Board of Education. So we're just going to call it Brown from now on. So in the Brown case, um, the ruling was that under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, that everybody had the same rights to all the services offered, people weren't getting the same education at segregated schools. And parents found a way to use this as precedence for their children with exceptionalities. They found a way to actually arc back to that lovely arc that we like so much. 1971, Al Arc brought a class action lawsuit against the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and we're going to call that case Park. Um, the ruling in the Park case was that anybody from 6 to 21 was entitled to an education. Didn't matter. You were entitled to an education. Now, at the time, this meant a very basic education. We can now send people who had exceptionalities to a general classroom. There was no differentiation yet. However, um, we actually had, in 1975, a thing come up that was education for all children. Now, this, in 1990, was changed to the Individuals with Disabilities Act, or IDEA. And if you have a child in SPED, it's probably a term you're very familiar with, IDEA. Well, this is where it came from. During the amendments in 1990, this is what it became. And then we started to get a little bit of differentiation. And what happened here is we were capable of understanding the difference between moderate disability and severe disability, and the fact that students just had very different needs. Even better, under the next amendment in 1995 of IDEA, we created individual education, individualized education programs. And if you have a child in special education, you have been to an IEP meeting. And I think that it's really important that you understand where this came from and why we do this and how hard many people have fought for this. Now, speaking of keeping up with legalities and understanding this, ARC is still an amazing organization and they have a ton of resources. So if you go to the ARC, T-H-E-A-R-C dot org, you can find all of these amazing resources, just a click of a mouse. Um, you can also find, where did I put it? There's also CEC.sped.org, which is another amazing 
organization and they also have insane amounts of information. They can tell you how to advocate for yourself, for your child, what your rights are. And don't forget, you always need to check on a state level. So whatever state you live, where, or anybody lives in, I live in California. So I would look up California Department of Education or CDE.gov. This is going to give me so many things, and if you just type into Google California Department of Education, there's actually a little special education tab that will help you out. It is so important not only to know where your child's rights came from and your rights came from, but how to ensure that their needs are being met as well as your family's needs and that the school is servicing your child fairly. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. I hope you have a great day.